Rodney Harrison is here. He will be part of that uh, monster pregame show from that beautiful building that's right across the street here in Minneapolis. Good to see you, sir. And you have some hardware on that right hand of yours uh, from the last time that the Patriots went back-to-back by beating the Eagles, and then you were able to lift this trophy. What is that like, lifting this trophy, Rodney Harrison? Well, Tom had it in his hands pretty much the entire time. I never got a chance to really pick it up, but Mm -hmm. I see it. It's, It's pretty special. What do you mean you never got a chance to pick it up? I never got a chance to hold it. You want to do it? Yeah. Okay. Do I need gloves? Yeah. Right here. Put them on. Actually, yeah, you should do that because the NFL would be. <laughs> I think Dan Patrick is the only guy that doesn't use gloves. So, Tom, right? what do you mean well, as you're putting the gloves on? Tom kept it the entire time? and, and yeah, It's like, oh, we won the Super Bowl. It's all about me. It's all about me. I won the Super Bowl. Look at you picking it up now. Oh. I see that. It's pretty sweet right here. So is, this, is this the first time you're picking up this trophy? I think so, yeah. I don't remember ever picking it up. I, and that's something that you definitely would remember picking it's up, beautiful. one would think. It's beautiful. So what was that? Uh, what was Belichick like that week coming in, taking on an Eagles team that had McNabb, T.O., and a chance to do what they have a chance to do this week, which is go back-to-back? Back? His entire theme was just – Stand patient, making sure you do your job, making sure you take care of all the little things, but also making sure that you take care of all the business the week before, making sure that you take care of your your tickets, hotel rooms, any of that nonsense, and letting your family know that you're down here for a bigger cost. Not to hang out with them, not to go to dinner. Those things are nice, but ultimately you're here to win a Super Bowl. So that's what he told you guys, like flat out? That was kind of the message. Tell your loved ones. And he's a lot nicer now than he was back then. Yeah. He, yeah. Yeah. He was very stubborn and very honorary back then. He's softened up recently. What's your indication that he has softened up, Rodney? Man, all you have to do is go, on, go into the Patriots organization and kind of look around. It's just these guys have more freedom, which is good. They have all these personal meals and nutritionists. We never had anything like that. It was just strap on the helmet, get out there and take care of business. So uh, all the stuff that apparently. Tom's guy was not allowed to be brought in, was brought in. I'm trying to pick up what you're putting down and trying no, to square it, had, it, it with it all the no, stuff that's been reported. It had nothing to do with Tom. I'm just I'm just saying in general. But um, as we speak about Tom, Tom is he's great. And it was it's really good to be able to communicate with him. I know he's really, really focused on this game and he wants to win this game for his legacy. So how what do you mean for his legacy? I mean, did, not for him. Not, I'm, I does, know. Does he think his legacy is not cemented? I think he looks at himself as a six-round draft choice, and, and he's always looked at himself as, as that. That's why he prepares. That's why he never takes anything for granted. That's why he works his butt off. And I tell you, every time I would go in there at 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, he's one of the first guys in that weight room. All right. Well, I want to take a break, uh, and then when we come back, d- dive into this game and what you think is going to happen on Super Sunday, if we can do that. Rodney Harrison of NBC Sports is here on the Rich Eisen Show live from Minneapolis in the Honda Studios. All right, we have a minute before the radio audience returns. Um, how are you enjoying the paparazzi? How are you enjoying being part of the media, Rodney? How are you liking it? I just got in, Rich, and literally I woke up and did a little yoga this morning and came over here. So you never got a chance to do that? I never got a chance to do anything. I'm just, this is my first interview. No, I'm just no, I'm just talking in general, being part of the media. Oh. As, as a, as, you know, in your second act of your career. How you I mean, it's, I'm enjoying it. I get a chance. I mean, I love the Thursday nights. Because you get a chance to go out there on the field mm-hmm. and talk to the players and interact. And it's it's nice because as I've gotten older, I'm 45 now, a lot of times I think that the younger players don't know me and they'll walk up to me and shake my hand. Hey, Mr. Harrison, love, you know, to watch, used to watch you play when, you, when I was growing up. And it was just really surprising because I'm older now, Rich. Mm-hmm. I'm closer to 50. <sighs> Come on now. I can't believe it. How many snaps could you give me right now? How many snaps? <sighs> Super Bowl, I'd probably give you about... Maybe about 10 to 15 snaps. That's good. I'll take that. I'll take that. No, no, man. How many snaps for you to get your first flag? How many snaps? (laughs) 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 Just just whoever comes across the middle. Look out. (laughs) You already know, right? Got to have your head on a swivel (laughs) when you're with Rodney Harrison. Back when the radio audience returns in a couple minutes. You know how many times I called them San Diego this year? We all did. Uh, every yeah. last one of us. So yeah. many times. You yeah. were just like, oh, yeah, the San Diego Chargers have no chance this year. And they're like, you're right, because they don't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I screwed that up many times on television. We were doing that all the time. All right, so now, you knowing the New England offense as well as you do, and Brady as well as you do, and knowing how talented these Eagles are on defense, as I'm sure you can agree, they're one of the top 
defenses in the league this year. How do they match up well to prevent Brady doing what he normally does in games like this? Well, I think everyone has talked about it, the strength of their defense being in the front four and really taking advantage of those offensive guards. I mean, they have so much speed and quickness, and they don't have to blitz to create pressure. I think if you're the Patriots, you're Tom, you expect that. So the ball's going to come out quick. I expect a lot of screens, a lot of hurry-up offense, just to change of pace to keep those guys from rotating all those different pass rushers. Okay, so how do you think Brady and the Patriots and McDaniels are going to combat that? Well, they're not gonna they're not gonna do something that they've had success for for twenty plus weeks, and all of a sudden go away from it. Mm-hmm. I think the best way is let put the ball in Tom Brady's hands. You don't have to worry about snow. You don't have to worry about weather conditions, and let him pass the ball forty plus times. This front four and the, and maybe the linebackers, but I would take a chance with my running backs against those linebackers covering an open space and attacking Darby and Jalen Mills and those guys, I think Tom Brady could throw over for 300, 350, easy on these guys. What about Foles against the Patriots defense? Well, I think it comes down to discipline for the Patriots defense because they have so many different moving parts, a lot of cross boots, play action pass, a lot of crossers and things like that. So if you're the Patriots, Matt Patricia is saying, hey, number one, we have to make sure we read our and trust our reads. Don't think that you see something, go up there, and all of a sudden you give up a, a, a deep play behind you. What do you mean by that? Trust your reads. Explain well, that to people. Like, who might say, not. for instance, if you have man-to-man on an outside technique, Belichick always told us, if I have you playing outside technique but you get beat inside, okay, we live to see another down. But if I have you an outside technique and you get beat outside, we got a real problem. <laughs> so that's what I mean, making sure that you do your responsibility and competing. Because and, and that's uh, – I'm, I'm pleased to have this conversation because so many times when I have a former Patriot sitting in a chair like you, Willie McGinnis, et cetera, and they just say, well, Belichick just tells you to do your job. And then it's just like, well, okay, how, how does that manifest itself? There it is right there, that if your job is to play a certain technique, don't get beat on it, period, by saying, okay, you got an outside technique, then think, oh, gosh, I need to now play an inside technique. You get beat. That's when you get your ass chewed out. I'll give you an example. At the early part, the first month of the season – if you remember, Patriots gave up a lot horrible. of big plays. They, they were historically And bad. I'm going to tell you the difference. Back when I played for Belichick, he would have benched one or two people in that secondary. But he was patient. He allowed for a month for them to get it back, and then they became one of the best defense. That's why I say this is a different Bill Belichick as opposed to when he coached us. Or what about it wasn't as deep as your team? How about Excuse that? Me? It wasn't as deep. Maybe he just didn't think the other options were were viable. Well, they, they feel like they have a lot of depth because they prepare all the backups just as well as they prepare the starters. Because, yeah, Willie told us on game day morning uh, when they were playing, who were they playing? Tennessee with the exotic smash mouth that you never know who's going to get the ball. He goes, I don't think they're going to have a problem with this because if you do your job, if you know your assignment, you don't follow all that trickeration. You just stay where you are and just know what your read is. That's pretty much just the way – Things go, is what he said. Yeah, but when I look at the Patriots' defense, I mean, it's really nothing in that front seven that really impresses me. I mean, you look and you say, wow, this defense is slow. I went to the AFC Championship game. I left right before halftime, and I'm looking at that defense, and I'm like, how are these guys even here in the AFC Championship game? And it's no disrespect because I spent some time right after they won the AFC Championship, but they don't have a lot of great playmakers. They don't have a lot of great individual players on that defense. But what they have, they have guys that are coachable, guys that you, if you tell them, run through that brick wall, they're going to run 100 miles per hour through that brick wall. And that's what Belichick means why, when he talks about not having the best 53 but having the right 53 players on his team. Rodney Harrison here on the Rich Eisen Show. Who on the Patriots defense could crack the Eagles starting lineup? Who on defense. Who on the Patriots start defense would be able to crack the Eagles starting lineup? I would defense? say um, probably their entire secondary. Their entire secondary. So are, is better than Jenkins and Darby and all those guys? I would say Jenkins is the wild card because the Jenkins can play nickel. He can play the dime back where he's covering a tight end. He can play deep safety, free safety, strong safety. But most of these teams are playing with three safeties. So when you when you start talking about the four starters, actually it's going to be five starters because Patrick Chung, mm-hmm. he plays strong safety, but he plays down in the box. So don't you think with the RPOs that that the Eagles are going to just try and pepper that 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 five to ten yard space beyond the line of scrimmage, yeah. and that's the way that they're going to try and move the ball down the well, field? Well, they're going to try to run. They'll try to do those um, run-pass option reads and all those different things. Once again, 
I don't know. I'm not the defensive coordinator. You know, I've watched tape and I've seen the Patriots and how vulnerable they are in certain positions. But if you're Philly, you don't, it's not rocket science. Continue to do what you've been doing. Run the ball, play action pass, let um, Nick Foles go. I love the fact that they allowed him to be aggressive last week. They sure did. They didn't micromanage him. They didn't say, oh, we're going to treat you like you're a rookie. He is a grown man. He's a veteran. He's won a lot of football games. Continue to put the pressure on the Patriots and you'll have a chance. That's the worst thing you could do because everyone gets so enamored by the Patriots and what Brady's doing. And I love the fact Doug Peterson said, hey, it's not about the Patriots. It's about us. I'm not going to talk about Belichick and Brady. We know what they've accomplished, and that's fine for them. But we're here to win a football game. All our attention goes on into us. And I love that from Doug Peterson. When you were playing against the Eagles in that Super Bowl, did you see McNabb in the huddle? lose his cookies. Did you guys see that? I already knew McNabb. I mean, we we respected McNabb, and we knew that he was a really good player, but we had such a great defensive plan. I think instead of starting like three or four linemen, we started like five or six linebackers and maybe one defensive tackle. I think that was Richard Seymour. So we came out, we had five or six linebackers standing around, moving around, doing different things, and it caught them off guard. But that was another genius move by Belichick by putting so many athletic guys in that we had more speed on defense. Does T.O. belong in the Hall of Fame? T.O. is an absolute monster, and I don't care. You know, T.O., I'm not one of his favorite people, but I can say as a football player, he is a tremendous football player. He works hard. Um, he, um, he makes a lot of plays. And there's no reason why he shouldn't be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I'm, I'm actually embarrassed. I'm saddened for him because if you can't, if you Terrell Owens and you can't get into the Hall of Fame with what he's done on the football field, no one deserves to be in it then. Yeah, I think he deserves to be in it this week. Uh, in the minute we have left, ask Rodney our poll question that's sitting there on our app, Apple App Store, Google Play, at the hit top of our Twitter handle, hit the link, and you can vote on this poll question. Go for it, Chris. Hey, Rodney, what's the worst uh, team Bill Belichick's Patriots have faced in the Super Bowl? The 03 Panthers, the 04 Eagles, Seahawks, Falcons, and this year's Eagles. The worst one? The worst one. Okay. You went negative. Damn. You went negative. You went not so great. Okay. Well, the Panthers were probably the most physical. The Eagles were the cockiest. Um, <laughs> well, in a close place with Seattle, I think the most gratifying victory was probably when they beat Seattle. I think that was the most gratifying. See, so. he went positive. He went positive. He went negative. Well, last year we asked the best team, and this year oh, we're okay. asking the worst. Or team. you're just into asking pissant <laughs> questions, being from New England. Yeah, that was a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should change it to be positive. See, Rodney's telling us to be positive. Do you have a positive question? No. And then I get <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give him a negative answer. Okay. Rodney, have a great have a great cast. Uh, I believe it starts at noon Eastern time, uh, 11 o'clock local here on Sunday on NBC. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. That's Rich. Rodney Harrison. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.